What's going on here is called a seed orchard. It's just one of uh, many generations of chestnut breeding we're doing. We're helping bring them back from basically extinction. And we're all members of the Student Conservation Association. And we do various projects working to help rebuild trails and doing other really awesome environmentally focused projects throughout the year. So we're planting thousands of trees here in Weston at one foot apart and five foot wide rows. We don't expect them to last more than five years before we cut all but 1% down. The 1% are likely to be quite resistant to chestnut blight. And then that 1%, that elite 1% stays here in Weston for the next 35 years, producing nuts for reforestation here in Weston and otherwise locally. So this generation of tree, which my daughter Holly planted uh, 10 years ago, uh, is now bearing nuts that we're using for making seed orchards. What we do to select these trees for further breed breeding is deliberately inoculate them with uh, little plugs of chestnut blight fungus in the bark. It's a bark disease. And if you come over here, I'll show you what the result of one of these inoculations looks like. This, this type of tree is only expected to be moderately resistant to chestnut blight because of where it is in the breeding program. But, and you can see that it's sort of healing and sort of not healing. The, the blight fungus that was introduced in this one versus the lower one on the tree is a less virulent strain of chestnut blight fungus. So we're getting a spectrum, we're getting a, a virulent strain and a non-virulent strain to help assess how the tree uh, fights off the blight. Chestnut is something that's called an indeterminate grower, so it's always sending out new growth throughout the summer. Later in the summer, deer are looking for fresh salad to eat, not old stuff that's been sitting in the refrigerator for a while, so to speak. So they want this uh, type of species to eat later in the summer, and because of that, and because the town of Weston does not want a large uh, exterior fence around this planting plot, I have to protect every single individual tree. But chestnut doesn't compete very well in the seedling stage with grass. So uh, since I'm planting in a grassy field, I have to, I have two choices. I can put Roundup on and get rid of all the grass and then plant or I can cover with this Lumite plastic, which is a woven plastic and allows some moisture through, but uh, keeps down the grass. So uh, we don't like to use Roundup here. So we're making holes in the plastic and using a, a map torch to do it. It, it has the advantages over using a, a knife to do it and it, it kind of cauterizes the edges of the hole so that the fabric won't unravel afterwards. It's also much faster than using a knife. So we're headed over to a plot that's all ready to plant and we're going to start planting, uh, placing the nuts in the, in the planting spots and getting them all set so that they can start sprouting and growing up. So the holes are about six inches deep. And once those are in the ground, then we'll fill the hole with a little bit of compost after it's been prepped and the stake is in the ground. And then we plant the chestnut itself. Someone else comes behind the planter, adds more compost on top, and then we put the little cage down all the way into the soil, about three inches deep. And then we water them so they're nice and hydrated and ready to go. So in order to protect the nut from predation by turkeys and other critters, to keep the chamber warm and, and uh, protected, I put a rock on top of the tree protector. Then when the tree has germinated, boom, I take it off and on to the next step.